I thought maybe let me, I was, grew up, my mom was Catholic, but normally I never went to church in my life. So I said, let me go to the Catholic church. One day at work, I, from Alois, Zimmer, Alois, I went, got on the bus at lunchtime, went to the priest's house next to the Catholic church, knocked on the door. I thought, maybe this man can help me. Sat down with the priest. I said, my soul is so burdened. I heard somebody preaching about Jesus. I want this forgiveness that he's speaking about. He says, I can arrange for your confession. I wasn't looking for a confession. Bring my soul to the saving knowledge of Jesus. That's what I wanted. I wanted someone to point me to Jesus. Why? So then I go to university now. In fact, I didn't. I went a couple more weeks. I was so burdened by my sin. One day I said, I don't know what to do. Like the prophet, he speaks in his testament. I got down next to my bed. For the first time in my life, I properly prayed. I don't even know what I said. But I just said something like, Lord, I'm a sinner. The devil was telling me, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. There's no forgiveness for you. <laughs> yes, Jesus died for people, but he didn't die for you. And I was under such a condemnation. Yeah, yeah. Until I couldn't take it anymore. I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, Lord, please. If there's forgiveness for me, please forgive me. And I was so tired, I fell asleep. When I woke up, friends, I was in the presence of God. His glory came down. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I said, God is real. Yeah. And he heard my prayer. Yeah. That's the first time I ever got into the presence of God. Yeah. It was just a simple prayer of an ignorant, yeah. unlearned sinner boy. Yeah. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Because yeah. the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved. Yeah. And I can say, I heard, but now I see. Yeah. I can say, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. Yeah. I called upon him and he saved me. I still didn't know what to do. The burden went. You now the prophet says that time when he prayed in the woodshed and he put the sack down and he prayed and the cross came down and he felt so light. Yeah. The burden, he didn't know what to do. He went running and jumping down the, the railroad track. When I prayed like that, the burden went. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I went back with my friends. We went out drinking some beers again and I used to tell them, you guys, do you know that God is real? They said, what are you talking about? I said, God is real and I met him. I said, how can you meet God? I said, I prayed and I met God. What did he look like? No, he revealed himself to me. They said, you, my friend, need to get to church. I don't know which church to go to. So at the end, about a month later, I went to university, Rhodes University. I get down there. I get the student director. I say, I need to find someone to help me now. I've met this God. I know he's real. He forgave me of my sin, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. I look in the directory of the university. I look for Catholic Students Union. They say it's number, room number so and so next to the rugby field. Five o'clock, whatever day, Tuesday. I go down there. Nobody comes. I say, what am I supposed to do now? I'm trying to find God, but I can't find him. From there, I walked up from the rugby fields up. Our hostel was the furthest one at the top of, of, of Rhodes University, Cullen Bowles Hostel. Walked all the way up. As I got outside the, the, the hall, all the guys from our dorm were outside. I'm standing speaking to this Jewish guy, speaking to this uh, Indian guy. And this Guy walks up to me that I didn't know. His buddy was from a hostel. And he comes and says, you guys, would you like to see my Lord Jesus Christ in action? I said, what are you talking about? He says, at the Monument Theater on Thursday night, there's a healing campaign. Come and see Jesus Christ in action. I said, I'm coming. Oh, friends. Friends, if you're thirsty, God will meet you where you are. He'll meet you at your point of need. So when I said, okay, I'll go. Then the Jewish guy says, I'm going to come with you. <laughs> and the Indian guy, his name was Mahesh Maharaj. He said, I'll come with you also. We get into his car on the Thursday. We get there. You know what it's like when you, you're away from God? You sit in the back. <laughs> so we sat right in the back. Yeah. For the second time in my life, I heard somebody preaching about Christ on the cross. He was a medical doctor, but he was a minister. And he was speaking physically of what Jesus went through on the cross. Friends had got a hold of my soul. Amen. At the end, it was packed. Amen. Yeah, I've got a Jew on this side. I've got an Indian on this side. He makes an altar call. He said, if anybody would like to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, come forward. Amen. I said to my friends, friends, I'm going. Amen. I got up and I went and I stood in front. Amen. But friends, God is good. Amen. Because when I said, I, they came and prayed for us and stuff. And they said, okay, come behind the stage. Went into this room. There was a girl there said, okay, what is it you want? I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to just find out about the Lord. She gave me a list of scriptures. Go and read these scriptures. I didn't even have a Bible. 
How do you know those little Gideon's New Testament? That's all that they gave me. I went back to the hostel now. All the guys in the hostel, they're saying to me, Andrew, what's up? Are you born again now? I said, I don't know what I am. You know? <laughs> I don't know what I am. I'm just trying to find something. But God doesn't forget. While I was there standing in front of the stage, giving my heart to the Lord, that same guy from our hostel who had come and invited us and said, come, and he was playing music on the stage. His name was PJ. The next day I come back from, from, from lectures, somebody says to me, Andrew, that guy PJ, he's looking for. I said, which, that guy upstairs, PJ. He used to have in big red letters on his door. He had cut out in paper, Jesus. He was a real <laughs> radical Christian guy. I walked up the stairs going up to his room. He stepped down to me, he took my hand. He said, congratulations. You are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Oh, friends. And God had the man for me now. Yeah. Now he took me under his wing and we learned how to pray and we received the Holy Ghost, went through all the different things. But then God still had something in store. He said, I've got a message and you don't know the message. Oh, friends, I've got a message. So me, I'm a Pentecostal boy. We're enjoying ourselves. Women ministers, tongues is the evidence of the Holy Ghost and all that. Having a good time. Preach, testifying on the streets. And then one day somebody says to me, we had a prayer meeting in my room and the other Christian guy said to me, there's a guy just above you, one floor above, his name's Clint, Clint Nicholson. He was a message believer, I don't know the message. He says, as a Christian, why don't you invite him to come to the prayer meeting tomorrow? I said, fine, I'll do that. So I went upstairs, went, knocked on the door, there was Brother Clint. There was a picture of the cloud on his wall. And I said, hey, brother. I said, this is powerful. I must speak to you about this something. But anyhow, we're having a prayer meeting in my room tomorrow. Would you like to come to the prayer? He said, yes, I'll come. <laughs> I didn't know that there was an earthquake coming. I didn't know there was a revolution coming. <laughs> now, friends, the, the story of brother, brother Clint is an interesting one. Brother Clint was 25 years old, living in Port Elizabeth. He was working for SA Perm, you know, SA Permanent. The building society he just gets a notion in his soul to say, ha, let me leave my job, I'll go to university. Instead of going to UPE, he applies to go to Rhodes University. And he, when they're filling in the forms, which hostel? Cullen Bowles Hostel. So he decides to go. That same year when I'm still a sinner boy, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. I am wandering around. I've just left school. I meet a friend of mine. He's a Greek guy. It was actually while I was playing pool. At this sports club, he was playing pool one day. And he walked in, this guy, a Greek guy, Chris, and he said, hey, Chris, I haven't seen you for a long time. He says, I'm at Rhodes University. I said, oh, that's nice. He said, Andrew, what are you doing with yourself? I said, I'm really doing nothing. He says, come to university. I said, yeah, I should have done that. Okay, which university are you at? He says, I'm at Rhodes University. I said, which hostel are you at? He says, I'm in Cullen Bowles Hostel. <laughs> So I said, good. I went home, spoke to my mom and my dad. I said, yes, we always wanted you to go. Fill in the forms. I get accepted. Brother Clint comes from Port Elizabeth. <laughs> Cullen Bowles Hostel. I come from Zimbabwe. Cullen Bowles Hostel. I, I meet the Lord. Get into the Pentecostal faith about six months. Then in the October of that year, somebody sends me up to Brother Clint's room. Invite him to the prayer meeting. The next day I get to the room. I'm a little bit late. He has Brother Clint with his Bible open demolishing by the scriptures everything we believed. <laughs> one by one. Woman ministry is not of God. One of our best preachers was a woman. <laughs> Tongues is not the evidence of the Holy Ghost. What? That's what we were resting in, that we all spoke in tongues. Baptism is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh my! My whole world life was turned upside down. I said, Clint, you need to stay behind afterwards. <laughs> we need to have a little bit of a talk about some of these things. And all the rest of the guys went, we spoke to me, went to his room. I couldn't sleep. That night I couldn't sleep. I said, Lord, if the rapture is coming, I'm not ready for the rapture. I'm not even baptized right. I haven't even been baptized right. Oh, friends. I went in the night and I knocked on his door in the morning and I said, Brother Clint, you need to wake up. He said, what is this? I want to be baptized. <laughs> I said, I don't want to, I want to be baptized. And I, I think it was on a Wednesday, I was baptized in the town dam in Grahamstown on, on, the, on the Saturday. With my friend PJ, the two of us, we came to the message at the same time. Our friends, God is good. God is good. But it was that revelation of Jesus Christ. When I saw that should have been me on the cross. 
That should have been me crying in the darkness in the midst of the day saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 